That's so, what an introduction. So sweet. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that it is time to arise in advance. It is time to walk in the miraculous. It is time to acknowledge that we are your ecclesia, your legislative body on earth. We thank you that we are your church, that we are rising in power, we are rising in anointing, we are rising in grace. We ask you, Father, to accomplish your purpose tonight. We pray for miracles over every person who has come here tonight tonight. We also pray for those online, Lord, that they would uh, receive exactly what they need in order to move forward in this season in their destiny. So God, we dedicate this time to you. We ask that you would be glorified in all that we do. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And if you agree with that, say amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, those of you who were, how many of you were here at our last miracle night? Okay. Well, um, it was a, an incredible night. We had uh, Senator Mike Krotz was here who had been raised from the dead and he was here with his wife Phyllis. Uh, she actually had uh, had COVID, was on a ventilator for I don't know exactly how many days, but it was way beyond the normal time frame in which people uh, would stay on a ventilator and she flatlined and she died. They brought her back and she had a testimony uh, that was sharing. And what many of you may not realize is that while Senator Krotz was here on stage, he actually lost consciousness. He passed out while he was speaking. And uh, we prayed for him. And, uh, and he came back, and then he passed out again a second time right here on the stage. And what you don't know, the backside of the story, is that he had no pulse. And while we prayed for him, he came back. And that was a miracle in and of itself. God performed a miraculous uh, time uh, for Mike to come back because he had a message. And that message, I think the whole evening was a message, but he had a message of resurrection power, of life, and that we all are called to walk in all that God has for us and that we're not to shrink back, that we're to believe God for the impossible. And yes, that, that, is, that is so wonderful and awesome. And, uh, you know, while this was happening and we were exhorting, of course, everyone to pray for him, um, it was so clear and it was stated that night that part of, part of getting ready to walk in miracles and to be the ecclesia is to be ready in season or out of season. To be ready to believe God, to have faith in God, to walk in faith, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the circumstances are. Now, when we invited him to come, we had no idea that was going to happen. How many of you believe that? We, we had no idea that was going to happen. And yet, it did. And uh, now, his wife knew that he was gone. Uh, the apostle that came up with him, who was his friend, knew he was gone. But we didn't announce it because how many of you know that we knew he was coming back? Amen? 
God did not send him here to share testimony to take him home on the stage, right? And so he, he came back. But um, I think that what we can glean from this is that we're all called to be ready to walk in miracles no matter what the circumstances are and that it's he lived a life of faith, a life of pure faith. Uh, he and his wife Phyllis believed they uh, they believed God for miracles. They believed God for the supernatural. And if you were here, then you would have known that um, when he came back after having no pulse on the stage, he prayed for people for over an hour and was stronger than he ever was even when he first came in. Let's thank God for that. <clears throat> And after they were talking of going to Waffle House, you know, I mean, that, that's how, how strong things, things were. Now, we know that after that, and then uh, uh, shortly, a few days after that, he went to be with the Lord. And it was his time. But it was, uh, it, we were honored to have him with us for Miracle Night. And it was a blessing seeing the faith and then have God perform a, an incredible miracle for us even as we were here to he learn about miracles. So I've been thinking a lot about faith because faith is such a critical component to the miraculous. We know that the scripture tells us Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But there is such a depth of faith that God is calling us to in this time. And what does it mean to walk in faith? It means that we look to God's reality. We look to his word and not to the circumstances to dictate our response. Our response is dictated by the truth. And the truth is in God. The truth is God's word. And we can, we can walk through circumstances in peace because we have that truth. And as we keep our eyes fixed upon him, we can walk through any storm. We can walk through a crisis. We can walk through situations. Jesus said there would be tribulations, but he said, take heart for I have overcome the world. And as we walk in faith and not by what we see, what we hear, or what the enemy sends against us, as we walk in faith, then we have that peace, that assurance, and that power available to us. So tonight I'm going to talk about faith and its relationship to the miraculous. We see faith in creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we know that. And as we walk through Genesis 1, now I'm, I'm going to start there, but I'm not going to go all the way through the Bible. I know you'll be happy to hear that. Um, but as we start in Genesis 1, we see that God said... God said, God said, and as we, as we read through that, I'm just going to read the, the snippets of it. It says, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. 
Then God said, let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place. Let dry land appear. Then God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Then God said, let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures. Let birds fly upon the earth in the open expanse of the heavens. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures. Then God said, let us make man in our image. And then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, behold, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth. And God saw that all he had made, and behold, it was very good. God said, we see faith in creation because the creation is the evidence of God's faith. The actual earth and all we see, the key is God spoke in alignment with faith with his faith. When God spoke, he knew it would happen. That's the God kind of faith that he wants us to walk in. That when we speak in alignment with his will, when we speak in alignment with his word, when we speak in alignment with his purpose, that we know it will happen. And we see that faith was demonstrated from the very beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. The kingdom of God is voice activated. When we walk in faith, we speak. What we speak should demonstrate and be words that articulate, that demonstrate our faith. That's why Jesus said, we'll give an account for every idle word. Because your words are important. You have the power of life and death in your tongue. And God has, has shown us that through the scripture. When we look at biblical examples of faith, it's a combination of spoken words and action that are all in alignment to bring it together. We see in, the, in, the, in Hebrews 11, 17 through 39, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. We see that by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. They spoke and released. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, he blessed each of the sons of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw uh, he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And it goes on and on and on. And so we see as the, the demonstration of faith in Hebrews 11, we see the, the demonstration of the great disciples, the apostles, and those great prophets that went before. They would speak and they would move in faith. Their actions, their words aligned with faith. We see Abraham and Isaac. We see Moses confronting Pharaoh. We see Daniel in the lion's den. We see the walls of Jericho. It was by faith that they yelled and raised up that sound that the walls collapsed. It was by faith at the Red Sea that they took their first step 
into that ocean and the walls and, and the sea parted. By faith, Gideon overcame with the 300 and defeated the Amalekites. And David defeated the Goliath. And he was so bold because David was ready. He was equipped and ready. And his faith was knowing that God is able and that he had already been prepared with the lion and the bear. That when Goliath showed up on the scene, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would defy the armies of the living God? He wasn't even intimidated, whereas the armies were intimidated. The armies were afraid, but not David, a shepherd boy, because he kept his eyes on God and the reality of his truth and not on the circumstances that he was walking in. If he looked just in the natural and he didn't have faith, he would not have, have been able to defeat Goliath. I really don't believe that. God prepared him, and more than just preparing him physically, he prepared his heart and he prepared his faith. And God is preparing you for great things. He's preparing your heart. He's preparing your faith. He's preparing. Listen, everything that you have been through has been for a preparation. God is preparing us as the ecclesia. He's preparing you as a member of the ecclesia to rise up, to be able to walk in power and authority, to walk in miracles, to walk in demonstration power, to demonstrate that Jesus lives and that he is who he said he is. Tomorrow, we're having a power evangelism class. I'm excited about that. A lot of people are involved in the preparation of that. It's designed to not just present the gospel, but to demonstrate the reality that Jesus lives through healing, through prophetic words, through words of knowledge that are incorporated in the evangelistic message. You know, so many times people need to see a demonstration that God is real. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us as tools and as uh, gifts, but as, as the... Um, equipment that we need in order to dis demonstrate the reality of who he is, the greatness of his love, the greatness of his power, miracles, prophetic words can hook the heart of a man or a woman and draw them to Christ. And so I'm excited about that class tomorrow because it incorporates all of this in order to demonstrate and draw, demonstrate Christ and draw people into the kingdom of God. In the New Testament, we see that there are many, many demonstrations of faith. But in Matthew 8, 5 through 13, it talks about when Jesus entered um, uh, Capernaum and a centurion came up to him saying Lord my servant is paralyzed he's dreadfully tormented and Jesus said to him I will come and heal him and the centurion answered Lord I'm not worthy that you would come under my roof but only speak a word the faith that Jesus had the centurion had such faith in Christ that he said, just speak a word and my servant will be healed. 
And then he went on to talk about that he was also a man under authority, having soldiers under him. He said, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard that, the scripture tells us he marveled. And he said, assuredly, I say to you, I've not found such great faith, not even in Israel. The faith that we are called to walk in. And he said, go your way as you have believed, so it will be done for you. And his servant was healed at that very hour. In Matthew 9, 2, we see the story of the paralytic where his friends brought the paralytic lying on a mat. And when Jesus saw their faith as they were lowering through the roof, Jesus said, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And we see in that that story that is told for our benefit, told so that we might believe and have examples of how to walk in faith, that when these men lowered this paralytic through the roof, that it was just declared and such a demonstration of their faith that Jesus not only could but would heal him. If only the man would be in his presence. We see other great demonstrations of faith in Matthew 9, 22, the woman with the issue of blood. And when she touched him, he said, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. And in Matthew 9, 27, when Jesus departed and two blind men followed him as he was leaving. And they said, Son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said, Yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be unto you. And they were healed. We see a number of other examples. The woman with the demon-possessed daughter. Um, and, and Jesus was so uh, supportive and, and affirming of her faith. And then in John 20, verses 30 and 31, it says, And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So walking in faith, we're called to be a people of faith. We're called to walk in faith. How does that faith come? What does it mean? In Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The root of our faith is in the word, the Logos word, the Bible. That is the foundation of everything we believe, and that is the truth. The hearing of that word, if you want to grow in your faith, read the words of Jesus. And you can grow in your faith. Because in Luke 17, 5, the apostle said to the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. Our faith can be increased. And we know that each person receives a measure of faith when you're saved. Because Romans 12.3 says, For I say, though the grace given through the grace given to me, that everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we have a measure of faith that is given to us, but we can increase in faith. And it's whatever level your faith is, it is important to exercise that faith. 
Because we are called to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And that means that when there is a need, when there is a need for a healing, for a miracle, when there is a need for a breakthrough, for a deliverance, that we are to exercise the faith we have and be a disciple, a demonstrator of Christ. And as we exercise our faith, as we use our faith, as our actions align with our faith, our faith will grow. Your faith will grow. You're not going to see miracles if you don't pray for miracles. You won't see them. You won't see healings if you don't pray for healings. But I promise you, as a blood-bought believer in Jesus Christ, if you will exercise your faith and step out and begin to believe what the Lord says is true, as you speak it, as you pray it, you will begin to see miracles. There is no doubt about it. It will happen. It's part of your inheritance. It's part of what you're called to. It's part of what we are called to demonstrate to the, a generation that we are born in. We are called to demonstrate to this generation that God lives, that the word is true, that he's a healer, he's a deliverer, he's a miracle worker, that nothing is too difficult for him, that there's nothing that he can't do for with me. Then it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. We just have to keep our perspective up in heaven. We have to keep our perspective and our eyes on him. We have to believe with our heart, speak with our mouth what the word of God says, and speak that truth that he is a healer, that he paid the price for your healing, he paid the price for your miracle, that he desires to do it and you will see miracles thank you Lord Jesus was given all authority Matthew 28 18 says and Jesus came and he spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe the things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me on, in heaven and on earth. What does all mean? All. I mean, there isn't anything other. All means all. So all authority has been given to him. And he says to his disciples, go therefore. We are in an apostolic age, ascending time. Jesus is saying, go therefore. Heal the sick, raise the dead cast out demons that is our job description as a christian he gave that power and authority to us in luke 9 1 and 2 it says then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Because he did these things, we can do these things. He is our model. Everything Jesus did, you can do if you believe. If you will allow the truth to open your eyes, open your heart to the truth that he is our model. 
Everything Jesus did, he did as a man. He did as a man who was in right standing with the Father, who had the Holy Ghost with him. And we have the Holy Ghost living in us because of what Christ paid for us to come into that relationship with the Father. So when we receive Christ, we come into that same relationship with him. And therefore, we can do all things in Christ. That word power is the Greek word dunamis, meaning strength, power, and ability. Some other definitions uh, in the uh, dictionary include inherent power, power for performing miracles, moral power, and excellence of soul, the power and influence which belongs to wealth, Power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, or hosts. That is all encompassed in the word dunamis. The word authority is a Greek word, exousia. It means physical and mental power. The ability or strength with which one is endued, which you possess or exercise. It also means the power of rule or government. The power of judicial decisions. Jurisdiction. So when Jesus gave us power and authority... He gave us the power, which is the inherent power and the power for performing miracles. And he gave us the authority, the power of rule or government, the power of judicial decisions and jurisdiction. You have jurisdiction everywhere your foot treads. Because of the Holy Spirit in you. Because of who you belong to. Because you are a member of the church of Jesus Christ. And when you step into a room, the atmosphere should begin to change and shift. Because you are ushering in the presence of God. Demons should begin to yell out. That can be very inconvenient, depending on where you go. But they should recognize you, just like they did. They, when they said, Paul, I know, Jesus, we know, but who are you? We want them to recognize us. We want them to recognize that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus said, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, then surely the kingdom is upon you. We are called to usher in, to take territory for the kingdom of God. It is time to rise in advance. It is time to take territory for the kingdom of God. It is time to move forward. It is time for us to demonstrate the power and the greatness and the glory of our Lord. It is time to bring heaven down to earth. It is time to demonstrate miracles, to raise the dead to heal the sick, to cast out demons. There should not be a demon that feels comfortable in your presence. Every one of them should want to scatter seven ways because you have that authority. Christ gave it to us. Luke 10, 19 
He says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What does all mean? All. He gave us all power over all of the works of the enemy. Sickness, disease, infirmity. Those are works of the enemy. We have the power within us to heal the sick. We have the power to cast out demons. We have the power to release uh, the, the miracle working power of God. Whenever a need is present. If we believe. He says it. Do we believe it? When a need arises, whatever that need is, wherever you are, don't stand back and be an observer. Be an active participator in advancing the kingdom of God by extending your faith to demonstrate the reality of who he is. And he will be there with you. Matthew 10, 1, And when he called his 12 disciples, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. 1 John 4, 4, You are of God little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And as he sent them in Matthew 10, 7 and 8, he said, as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons freely you have received and freely give. As we walk in faith, we will be a generation that will see more miracles, more salvations, more revival, more glory, more presence. We will be a generation that will usher in a tsunami of God's presence and glory if we only believe. You're called to be a part of it. We're called to be a part of it. What an honor. What a privilege. And all we have to do is believe. And when we believe, nothing shall be impossible. Over and over and over again, Jesus said, nothing shall be impossible to him who believes. With God, all things are possible. With man, it is not possible. But with God, all things are possible. Over and over, he would say it over and over and over because he wanted them to not just hear the words but to internalize and let it get in their hearts. Let it get in their soul. Let it get in them that they would know the truth and by the truth they would be set free. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You see, there are no limits. There is no limitation. You and God, you and Jesus, you and Holy Spirit, Nothing is more powerful.
Because he called you, he's anointed you, he's blessed you, he's equipped you, and this is your time. You know, I was very touched this week because um, a great apostle of the faith, Bill Johnson, out in Redding, California, his wife, Benny, passed away. And he was preaching three days after her death. And he was praising God. And he said, one day, I will see him face to face and I will bow down before the throne of the Lamb of God and I'll worship him forever. He goes, but I will never be able to do that in a time of pain or uncertainty because once I'm in heaven there will be no pain there will be no uncertainty there will be nothing like that so it is an honor during this time that I'm in pain things are uncertain that I praise him now because this is an opportunity to demonstrate my love and devotion to him. Times may be difficult, but this is a time that we have to demonstrate our love and our devotion to him. Even in the midst of our circumstances, in the midst of things going on, we can keep our eyes fixed on him because he who began that good work in you, he will be faithful to complete it. He knows your end from the beginning. He knows where he's taking you. And believe me, he's not going to let you go. So you can walk in boldness, walk in confidence, walk in power, walk in authority, walk in the peace that can come from him, knowing that there is a reward that is coming. There is a day that shall come where you will stand before him and he will say, what did you do with what I gave you? And you can say, Lord, I healed the sick. I raised the dead. I cast out demons. I spoke your prophetic words. I equip the saints. I did whatever it was that you asked me to do. I did it. So extend your faith for miracles. Extend your faith for healing. Extend your faith for breakthroughs. Because with God with you, if God before you, who can stand against you? You are the church of the living God. You are called to this generation. He loves you. He's for you. And it's time. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are called to be a people of faith. Well, I can't talk about demonstration if we don't demonstrate. Right? So we're going to demonstrate a miracle. If there is someone in this room and uh, if you are in pain right now, is there anybody that is in pain right now? Well, praise God that nobody... Okay, you're in pain? You're, you're... Okay. You know what? I need to pray for my eyes. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see. <laughs> okay. You're in pain? Okay. Would you come forward? So I'm going to pray for her. 
And God's going to take care of her. Amen? Tell me your name. Karen Smith. Karen Smith. Do I know you, Karen? I have been here for years. I, okay. I thought I recognized that face. It's so good to see you. Karen, um, tell me what's going on. You're in pain right now? Okay. What kind of pain? I had surgery on my left shoulder and um, about 11 weeks ago, 12 weeks ago. Okay. And... I'm not progressing the way that I should, and I'm just sitting over, I was just telling my husband, I hate I didn't bring pain pills because I'm in a lot of pain. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your pain level? Um, probably about a 7 or 8. A 7 or an 8. Okay. So what type of surgery? Was it rotator cuff? Yes. Rotator cuff surgery. That's a very painful condition, I know. And how long had you had that? Yes. I was in a head-on collision in 2019, okay. and they've been trying to do physical therapy and everything. It didn't work, and so I finally had surgery on May 6th. Okay. okay. So May 6th, so that was about how long ago? Okay, so approximately 10 weeks, 10, 11 weeks ago. Okay. And so um, you you been having pain since then. All right, so um, what I'm going to do, is it okay to use you as an example? Okay. Um, is there any way that you can measure, besides just the pain level, how it, it, do you have restricted movement also? Okay, okay, so she cannot go even further than this. All right, well, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, okay? And um, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me, but it's not, it's not, the, the power in this is that you mean it from your heart. So if you can't mean it as I say it, then change the words so that you can mean it okay all right okay so thank you lord all right so i'm gonna lead you first okay father god, father god I, come in the name of jesus. I come in the name of jesus and i ask you to heal me and i ask you to heal me and take away the pain and take away the pain i do declare i do declare that i hereby forgive that i hereby forgive Every person that has ever hurt me. From the day of my birth. From the day of my birth. To this moment. To this moment. Those that have hurt me mentally. Those that have hurt me mentally. Emotionally. Emotionally. Physically. Physically. Or spiritually. Spiritually. Or any other way. Or any other way. Those that have betrayed me. Those that have betrayed me. Lied to me. Lied to me. Abused me. Abused me. Injured injured me or hurt me in any way or hurt me in any way I do forgive them now I do forgive them now and I cancel the debt that they owed me and I cancel the debt that they owed me I release them now I release them now Can you feel that Yeah I forgive my ancestors. For any way they open the door. For any way they open the door. For the enemy to operate in my life. For the enemy to operate in my life. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. For any way I open the door. For any way I open the door. For the enemy to operate. For the enemy to operate. Any way I contributed to this condition. Any way I contributed to this condition. Are any bad choices that I have made? I ask you to forgive me, Lord. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. For any sin I have committed. For any sin I have committed. From the day of my birth until this moment. From the day of my birth until this moment. I renounce the occult. 
I renounce the occult and any occult involvement, and any occult involvement by, me or my by me or my ancestors. I break every unholy soul tie, I break every unholy soul tie that, I have ever entered into, that I have ever entered into outside of your will. Outside of your will. And, I sever the effects and I sever the effects of that on my life. Of that on my life. I renounce and break every judgment, vow, or oath, every judgment, vow, or oath that I have made, that, I have made that, was outside of your will. that was outside of your will. And I break every generational curse. And I break every generational curse. That would come down my family bloodline. That would come down my family bloodline. That would contribute to this condition. That would contribute to this condition. Or or any other condition. I break it and sever it now. I break it and sever it now. I renounce all secret societies. I renounce all secret societies. Oaths and vows. Oaths and vows. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I ask you, Lord. I ask you, Lord. To take the pain away. To take the pain away. And to heal me now. And to heal me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I receive it now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I forgive the doctors. I forgive the doctors. And the nurses. And the nurses. And all health professionals. And all health professionals. For any way that they treated me. For any way that they treated me. That they shouldn't have. That they shouldn't have. I forgive them now. I forgive them now. Hallelujah. Okay, Karen, now I'm just going to pray for you so you just receive, okay? Father, I thank you for Karen. And Father, I pronounce her forgiven and cleansed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I call trauma out of her memory system, out of her brain, out of every part of who she is in her thinking, in her thoughts, in her soul, in her, her, her mind. Father, we call trauma out now in the name of Jesus. We call it out, uh, all of the, the ways of thinking and the, the defenses and the things and the patterns of thought that were created even through this trauma. Father, we break those patterns now and we release the mind of Christ into her. Father, we just call all trauma and fear out of her amygdala, out of her hippocampus, out of her limbic system. We call it out now in Jesus' name. We call the neural pathways to be rewired uh, and reestablished. And Father, that she would truly walk in the thoughts and the mind uh, that comes from you. Father, we bless her mind now. We bless her soul now. We cleanse her eye gates and her ear gates and even cleanse her tongue. Father, we declare that even the washing uh, by your spirit of these things uh, to wash them away, the things she's seen and heard. Father, we thank you for giving her a fresh start even to Tonight, in the name of Jesus. Father, I call trauma out of her physical heart now. All sorrow and, and sadness and grief and, and trauma, we command it to come out of her physical heart. Every neurologic cell that retains memory of trauma, we call it out now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, every part of her heart. We ask 
ask you, Father, to fill her heart with your light and your life and your joy and your presence in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. Lord, let it be filled with song and with light and life that comes from you. Holy Spirit, fill every part of her heart. Father, I call uh, trauma out of her GI system. Lord, from the top of her belly all the way down to the end, we call trauma out now in the name of Jesus. Every neurologic cell that retains memory of trauma, we call it out. We call out all fear in the name of Jesus. We command it to go in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. We call trauma out of her organs. We call trauma out of her musculoskeletal system. System. We call it out of even the surgical areas. We call trauma out now. We call out swelling and edema. We call out stiffness and soreness. We call the ligaments and the tendons to be divinely flexible in the name of Jesus Christ. We break the power of pain in Jesus' name. We command pain to go in Jesus' name name. We break the pain cycles. We break even the ruts that have been established and the ways in which they have been established uh, and how her body communicates. Father, we break those cycles. We declare they are broken in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I call forth a Holy Coast spinal uh, uh, adjustment right now. I call forth a cervical, her cervical disc, her occipital her cervical disc to realign right now every vertebrae every disc coming into perfect alignment in the name of Jesus in Jesus name I call her thoracic disc and vertebrae to come into alignment perfectly spaced the discs and the vertebrae in perfect alignment I call her shoulders to be in perfect position now I bring break the patterns of pain in the muscles and in the tendons and the ligaments. I call the shoulders to be perfectly flexible now in the name of Jesus. I call uh, even down as we go to the thoracic region and into the lumbar region of her spine. We command every disc, every vertebrae to come into perfect alignment being perfectly spaced now in the name of Jesus. Father, we call uh, her hips and her pelvic girdle to come into alignment now to be perfectly balance in Jesus name in Jesus name we call the hips and the legs and the knees all the way down to the feet Lord that she will be in perfect alignment that every bone every ligament every tendon will operate properly father we call forth even the wholeness and the restoration that you have promised her in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name now in the name of Jesus in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name now Karen I want you to just pick up your knees okay all right I want you to just kind of roll your waist a little bit, kind of, okay, good, good. Now I want you to just kind of roll your shoulders. Okay. I couldn't roll my shoulders before. <laughs> okay, well, I was going to ask you to do something you couldn't do before, so she couldn't do that. All right, now let's, um, let's check out the pain level. Okay. Okay, okay. Bring it forward. Bring it forward. Okay, here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to walk. Just walk with me, okay? Just walk with me. Father, I thank you 
for this shoulder and this arm being healed now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. Father, we break the pain. We break the power of pain. We thank you, Father, that she is being healed. Even as they went, you healed them. We thank you, Lord, that even as she goes, that you are healing her. That even as she extends her faith to believe, you are healing. We speak restoration now into this shoulder. Divine flexibility. Divine flexibility in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus. Now roll those shoulders again. <laughs> no pain as she's rolling. No pain at all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. Yes, it is. It is coming. Father, I ask you that any residual trauma, any swelling, any uh, edema, any stiffness, any soreness, Father, that you would restore her rotator cuff and her shoulder movement now. In the name of Jesus, I command the stem cells to go to the shoulder to regenerate whatever cells are necessary so that she will be fully functioning, fully functioning, fully functioning. And we thank you, Father, for the breaking of the pain. And we thank you, Father, for full restoration now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wow. I do want to say um, that when I came in, even on my way here, like I had so much pain in my arm and shoulder that it was excruciating. I don't have, I mean, it was throbbing all the way down to my hand, and I don't have that pain right now. Anyway. Hallelujah. Let's, come on, folks. Let's praise the Lord for that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he who began that good work in you will be faithful to complete it. And Father, we just speak to that shoulder. We command it to operate properly. We declare and decree that even before uh, she gets out of bed in the morning, she'll be able to see and stretch her hands up to heaven and be able to praise you for the miracle that you have done in her life. Father, we thank you for restoring her right now. And Lord, we speak to her DNA. We command it to come back into full alignment with the blueprint plan that you have for her in heaven. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that even as she is here tonight, that you are here to meet her in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, let's just roll those shoulders one more time. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> wow. She said her physical therapist was telling her to do this, and she said no because she couldn't. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you tonight for your healing power, for your miracle working power. And we thank you for Karen and for the goodness of who you are in the midst of this situation with her shoulder. And we look forward to the full fullness of that manifestation in Jesus name. Amen. Welcome. You are so welcome. Hallelujah. Now, if we didn't believe, if we didn't step out, if we didn't uh, begin to pray like that, we would have a sister that would be in excruciating pain. And now she's able to move like she couldn't move before at all. God is restoring and healing. Amen. Amen. Let's give him one more shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Well, I want to encourage you today, uh, and, I, and those of you online, I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to pray for someone's miracle this week. Pray for someone's miracle. Listen, God is just desiring to come and to show out and to show up. Amen? So uh, if you will step out, I guarantee you he will back you up. Amen? Oh, come on now. Amen? Amen. Amen.